Welcome back to the show. Another wonderful show, an excellent show and an ed tech show. And our next guest on the sofa is joining us and she is the founder and the CEO of the Bedrock Program. Please welcome to the sofa, a big round of applause for Audrey Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good Happy to, to see here. you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so the Bedrock Program, I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Uh, you've, you've gone through many different struggles and, and hard times and now you're here in 2024. How's it feeling? It's wonderful. It's wonderful to know that we resonate with so many young people who are looking to develop a future that has a lot more values instilled and not just about skills and that we're helping companies now understand how to navigate the Gen Z and the millennial workforce to be more productive and to be more engaging. So how do you um, actually bring these companies to the new light and, and make sure they're, they're keeping good with the culture, making sure they, they understand how everything is supposed to go and flow? So the core of what we do is work with young people, right, between 15 and 26. So we actually start with them throughout high school, university, and when they graduate. And the idea is to bring out of them an understanding of what their values, their core values that drive them, the values that never change throughout time. How you live them changes, but how, what they mean to you and what you're trying to get out of your life as you live them. Those core values are important, but they also look different in business than they do in your personal life. How do we support young people is by helping them understand what that looks like in business and then helping businesses who are now trying to deal with the generations that want a values-based yeah. engagement is we help them understand, okay, if they're coming in with this as a core function, as, as what they're looking to develop and, and looking to live by, how does that fit in with your productivity, your KPIs, the focus that the business wants to progress and not lose them? Because right now, a lot of them, they leave, right? Yes. And you get to a point and they say usually within a year or less, this isn't for me. Yeah. I don't like either the culture, I don't like the way it works. So we work with the business to say, what are you doing that's actually supporting the development of this young person to want to stay mm -hmm. for retention? So then you get your innovation. Yeah. You don't have to hire them back later on. And then you get your succession planning so managers can start to move up. And so it's a bit of a three-prong approach when it comes to businesses in terms of understanding the person, the policies and procedures and all the technical jargon, but also working with managers so that their conflicting um, importance doesn't hurt the business long run. Are they supporting that talent? Are they helping them to, to develop and, and grow the business? I wanted to ask, do you help people like, is it easier maybe to start at a young age for them to like set these things or is it just strictly for someone who finished graduated university is starting to look for a job? So we work with all sides because yeah. if you're graduating and you never had someone like us helping you exactly. from the beginning, yeah you have even more of an initiative to do the work mm -hmm. to understand your values because you're going out there, you've just finished four you years of uni. You don't know where uni, to go, what to do. You don't know where to go. <laughs> and there's so much information out, True. right? Like in the past, it was very limited. You're, you, someone told you you're good in, in maths. Maybe you got into economics or something related. And then you just followed the pathways that were traditional. And now you're being exposed to, you know, myriad, not just of traditional careers, but also using AI and technology, how those are changing and developing. Yeah. And so it's even more confusing to think about what to do next and, and how you can influence the paths that were in front of you. And so we work, when we work with young people, it's, it's beautiful because it's like putty, yes. right? They're, you're starting from the beginning and you're saying, okay, let me help you understand the world and let me help you place your values first. So you learn how to make ethical decisions. You learn how to see the world in a different light and to see the opportunities. When we work with universities and, and schools, we're actually helping educators create more engaging classrooms. Okay. How do you make sure that young people see their values as something that will help them for the future? Mm -hmm. Not just, okay, well, I'm teaching you and you have to listen yeah. and so forth. And then at the end, by the time they graduate, those young people who are going through and, and we are supporting them through their, through their journey feel more empowered. But then they get out into the work world 
And sometimes the employers are like, what are you talking about? Just get the work done, <laughs> right? right? It's yeah. like, you're here to do this and that's all we want from you and here is your SOPs and this is how it works. and transactional. It's exactly. like a shock yeah. on both sides. It is. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of youth, let's get you guys involved in this conversation. What are you thinking over here, Maha? Yeah, I'm thinking, how do you, in this growing competitive atmosphere, especially for students our age, um, where there's priorities on certain subjects and you need to be great at those subjects, otherwise you don't get into university. How do you make students value something that isn't necessarily prioritized in the school system currently? And that's why we work directly with educators, because we're trying to help them understand that even the universities are looking for well-rounded students. They're not just looking for the students who got A-plus in math. They're looking for the students who actually are coming into their studies as a holistic person, looking to create something in the future. That's what universities are looking for. And that right now is one of the areas that a lot of students are frustrated with. You've got either traditional values at home or traditional values in your school, saying this is how you should focus, right? Don't take the sports anymore, focus on your getting the top grades. And then they go to apply to university and they don't do very well on the personal statement because what's your focus? Where are you going? What, where is it leading you? They don't know yet. Right? They haven't actually had a chance to explore the finer points. Now, Audrey, we're just running out of time, but very quickly, if you had one piece of advice you could give parents and you know, students watching, them still, still at the start of their career and planning out that journey, what would that be? Communicate. Mm. Take the time to communicate with yourself first to actually ask yourself the questions no one asks. What's important to me? What do I want out of this crazy messed up world and all the changes we see happening? What is important to me? If it's taking care of people, great. What does that look like then in the fields that interest me? You can take care of people in education. You can take care of people in healthcare. You can take care of people in technology. You can take care of people in, in product development. So. Once you know what the values are, it's so much easier to then start to go down the, the route of where is this leading, and you open your mind and your heart to the different technologies and opportunities that come along. Because if you know where you're going, it means you can direct it. No one else is pulling you into their direction, and you don't end up you know, disengaged and frustrated that your life meant nothing to you. Well, thank you so much, well, Audrey. Thank you, Audrey, yeah, thank so much for joining us. It was very informative, and I wish, like, even like you said, if I had something similar growing up um, before Where I got Where were you guys 20 years ago? <laughs> like, this episode has been great. We, 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 yeah, we love our jobs. <laughs> but now we've got like a really fun part of the episode, which is DXB in 60, so we just want to get to know you better, and that's over to Dina. Yes, I've got my two guest co-hosts over here in the spotlight. So you guys stay right here. I've got a few questions to get to, to get to know you guys a little better. And we're going to alternate, but let me cue the clock. Okay, guys, three, two, one, and start. Okay, Adi, if you weren't into the AI slash hackathon world, what would you be doing? What job do you want in the future? I would like to be some, an engineer who like designs robots for various tasks. I find robotics very interesting. <laughs> what about you, Maha? Uh, I'd probably go into art, product design. Wow. Okay, the most used app on your phone. Most used app on my phone, probably Instagram. It is always Instagram. What about you, Maha? To be honest, I think it might be LinkedIn. Oh, oh. look at this one. <laughs> okay, um, your motto in life and work or school, I should say. Do you have a motto, anything you live by? Perhaps if there's an obstacle, always try finding ways around it and how you can fix it for other people. Uh, credit to my dad for this one. He always says, Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. So just pace yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And a superpower you wish you had? I wish I had mm, flying. I would love to like feel like a bird, you know, go wherever I want, explore wherever I want. Uh, the ability to go back in time, but only for five seconds. <laughs> So it's not too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, every, every answer is so well thought out. We did run out of time, but I'm just going to ask you both quickly, your favorite thing about Dubai? The fact that there's just so many opportunities here, like really like we created this hackathon starting from nothing and now we have over 300 students who registered. So yeah, like I feel like in any other place this wouldn't have been possible. Yeah, same with Adi. Um, that sense of opportunity, that sense of innovation and the sense that you can do whatever you put your mind to as long as you work hard.
I think it's pretty obvious you guys are going places. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for, for joining us. Please come back. Um, <laughs> I know you're, you're going to be going on to bigger and better things. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see your journey. You've done an amazing thing with the Hackathon and uh, we'll be watching and supporting. Thank you so much. Thank you so and much. And thank you, Audrey, of Thank course. you, Audrey, as well. That was <laughs> amazing. You. And uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be keeping up with what you're doing as well. Looking forward to it. Cheers. Thank you. Now, after the break, we are going to be giving away loads of prizes and Dina is going to be performing for us. Not this Dina, Dina yeah. Stars. Yes, she has performed with the massive likes of Calvin Harris, Take That, just to name a few. So make sure and stick around.